In this video, I'm gonna give you your holiday survival guide for eating around the holidays. Sit tight. So the holidays were always a, an enjoyable time, but also a rough time for me when it came to food, okay? Because I always looked forward to the holidays, but at the same time, I was always worried, I was always anxious about eating too much because I knew myself and I knew that I could get out of control and I could binge eat and I could emotionally eat and I could do all these things. And it's almost like it happened in my brain before it actually happened in real life. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about emotional eating. Once again, I've done some other videos in the past on this, but I'm gonna talk about more about the holiday eating because the holidays are a tough time for people who have any kind of disordered eating pattern, binge eating pattern, even people who are anorexic, any kind of issue with your relationship with food is going to be a little tough this time of year because everybody's eating. Food is like a focus of a lot of gatherings, right? So survival guide today. The first thing I want to tell you is to make sure that you are actually um, experiencing food with your senses in your body, not in here. So like I said, a lot of times we will create these stories in our head ahead of time about what's going to happen. We're worried about what's going to happen. We actually visualize ourselves eating too much. And this is almost like putting a stamp on things, right? This is what's going to happen because we're already there in our head. But we want to get present in our body. We want to actually not deprive ourselves so much or worry so much, but actually experience the food the tastes of food. A lot of times our body is craving certain flavors. Not that you're craving tons of, uh, your body can be craving sugar, obviously, but you're not craving tons of like, you know, chocolate and things like that. But sometimes your body is craving something from a physiological level or an emotional level. So I want you to be present with yourself and I want you to actually experience food. Let yourself have something, but uh, actually taste it. A lot of times we don't taste it. We taste it in here. We taste it in here and not in our actual body. See, our body actually will actually satisfy ourselves with one bite of food. That's all we need is the one bite. Do we stop there? No, because our brain goes into overdrive and it says more is better. We live in a more is better society. So we're gonna keep eating it to recreate that experience or try to recreate that experience to fill that void, to give us that good feeling. Cause it's that initial fight, mm, this initial, I'm sorry, uh, taste that we get. And we're like, oh, switch, switches my brain on. This tastes good. This makes me feel really good. So if I have more of it, it must be better. It's like any kind of addiction, right? If I take, you know, uh, 10 Tylenol, it must work better for my headache. No. So it's our training through life, okay? We've been trained, we've trained ourselves this way. Society has trained us to think that more is better. But if you can tap into your body, into your senses, you'll realize that really one or two bites or one cookie is going to satisfy you satisfy your body's need just as many as like 20. That's number one. The second thing is um, get in tune with your emotions, okay? Not only your body, but your emotions. And also just to go back to the body, ask yourself, okay, how does my body feel right now? Why am I like reaching for this stuff? Am I tired? A lot of times when the body is physically tired, the mind gets physically tired, mentally tired and we are prone to not making as clear of decisions or if we're tired we're going through the motions you know this right you're not as clear you're not as aware of things around you you're not as present so you just kind of like move around like a zombie okay so are you tired number one number two check in with your emotions this is all about being present and aware check in with your emotions what void is food going to give you your relationship with food 
where does this stem from, right? Where is the first time it stems from? So a lot of times it's the inner and the outer world. So the inner world is in here and the food is the outer world. So you can replace food with anything, with gambling, with sex, with drugs, right? It's us reaching for something because we think that there is some sort of gaping hole somewhere in here or in here and this out here is going to fill it. Okay, this is going to fill it. This cookie is going to fill it. Not on just the physical level, but emotional level. Okay, so you have to check in your inner world with your outer world. Where is this relationship stemming from, right? It's like a, a relationship with a person. What is this person giving me? They're giving me love, they're giving me comfort, they're giving me safety. Well, where did that come from? Maybe it came from family, right? When you were younger and stuff like that. So have to look a little deeper analyze with your magnifying glass and, um, and check it out. So essentially this relationship you've programmed, right? With anything, you've programmed it into your computer, your computer. So it's this constant loop you're playing that, okay, because initially this filled some, something for me. This made me feel good when I was having a really tough time or a bad day or a bad experience in my life, trauma of some sort, this initial instance, this relationship, it filled something for me. Therefore, I recre keep recreating it. I keep recreating it. It's a loop. It's a program. So it's a coping mechanism in a lot of, in a lot of cases, right? It makes me feel good. That's the whole goal in life is to feel good. So, it's picking apart that programming inside of you and reprogramming in a certain way. Now, it's not going to be easy because if we've been having this relationship for years, it's like breaking up with somebody who's been in your life for 20, 30 years. That's why married couples will stay together even if they're miserable. Well, we've been together for 50 years. How can we how can we do this? Whereas if you're dating somebody for two months, it's much, much easier. It's the same with food. Now, I don't want you to break up your relationship with food. Okay. A lot of times we no, 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 I can't have this. I can't, I can't, I can't. Mm -mm. You need to have a relationship with food. It's fueling your body, but it's the difference between a disordered dysfunctional relationship with food and a healthy one. Okay. So I don't want you to cut off your relationship with food. I don't want you to say, no, I can't have this. I want you to change how you view that. Okay. That's the most important thing, not deprivation because that never works. I'm not going to tell you eat a salad. Okay. Well, your family's eating all kinds of yummy, delicious, creamy things chocolate, cakes, I'm not going to say eat a salad instead because that's never going to work. What's going to happen? You're going to eat a salad, then you're going to binge because you didn't fill up your cup. You didn't fill up that void of what you actually, you didn't give your body or give yourself what you actually wanted in life. So number three, be completely transparent with yourself. I don't care if you lie to other people, but never lie to yourself. Never lie to yourself and forgive yourself for when you think you make some sort of mistake or mishap in your eating. Self-acceptance, right? We want to accept ourselves. Um, but you have to sometimes give yourself the cold, hard truth. Don't lie about or try to talk yourself into things that you know aren't true. Don't try to tell yourself that you have a good relationship with food when you don't. Don't try to tell yourself that you have a good relationship with somebody, person, when you don't, right? Because who's that going to hurt? It's going to hurt you. So be completely open and honest with yourself and transparent, even if the cold, hard truth hurts sometimes. So if you've been doing the same things over and over again and nothing is changing, then sometimes you're not being honest with yourself. Or sometimes you need to fuel your fire. What's not being nurtured in your life? Where do you not feel love and connection and safety in your life? A lot of times you try to cover that up with food, right? So be open, be honest, forgive yourself. 
And the last thing I wanted to mention around the holidays, because this is a holiday, supposed to be a holiday video, um, be aware of the food pushers in your life. Now, food pushers are tricky. They're almost like energy vampires, right? And I was always, when I was binge eating, when I had, you know, a lot of dysfunction with eating, or I was almost scared of food or scared to go to functions and parties because I didn't trust myself. I wasn't being honest and transparent with myself that I could, you know, be around people and do this stuff and people are pushing food on me and be able to stand my ground. <laughs> so food pushers, it's about not giving them so much of your energy and your time. Um, like I said, they're almost like energy vampires. So the more you give in, the more you add importance, the more you place all of your energy onto the food pusher from usually up here and worry about them, the worse it's going to be for you. The more they'll probably affect you. Because a lot of times we, before we even go to a gathering, we're thinking about these people. We know who these people are. We're having anxiety about these people. We're worrying about them. But let's try to understand them more than hate them. A lot of times we despise them. We don't despise them, but we, we hold grudges against them. Like, oh, like this person is really trying to sabotage my diet or my health. And no, that's not true. Try to understand where they're coming from. Usually a food pusher is their own insecurity in disguise as being good or caring in a certain way, okay? It's insecurity underneath that layer of caring, okay? And that's their deal, that's their deal, it's not your deal. It's not your deal to fix them, it's not your deal to fight with them or even give in to them. So what can you do when somebody's pushing food on you? Because you always have a choice. You always have a choice. Instead of anticipating the worst that's going to happen, don't place so much interest on them. Instead, either change the subject when they're trying to give you food. Um, you could say, I'm full and I'd like a take home container instead. There's so many things or ways around it you could go where you don't have to take what they're giving you, okay? If we took everything people offered us and I don't know, life would be kind of like chaotic and weird and just, I don't know, messy, but don't give them your energy, okay? You have to protect yourself, but you have to go in strong. Again, it's, it's, it's looking at, as my body tired? What am I trying to nurture today? Where is this coming from, this relationship I have with food, okay? Because food is tricky because it can start to affect our relationship with another person. So if somebody's a food pusher and we are so like in our head, about or being scared about food all the time, then it's going to affect how we view this person, right? We're going to project certain things onto this person or in our head, we're going to just look at them as like the devil in some case. But no, try to understand them more than hate them, okay? More than be annoyed by them. So anyway, I just wanted to do a quick video today about the holidays and how because I understand how hard it can be sometimes if we're thinking about food, we're obsessed about food, we're worried about food in a lot of cases. But there are some things you can do and one of those things is to um, be aware of yourself, be aware of your inner world and the outer world and this connection. Where is this connection coming from? Where is this pattern, this initial pattern coming from? That's the first step really in trying to break a pattern. But it's not about telling yourself, no, I can't have, I can't have, I can't do. Because the negative, the negative thought pattern is just going to propel the dysfunction further. And you're going to hate food in a certain way. And food is a very enjoyable thing in life and we need it to survive. So I want you to start building back a healthy relationship with food and loving yourself, but loving food that's nourishing your body. So it's tapping into the physiological needs too, and really paying attention to how food makes you feel 
initially, not like at the end of a binge session, but initially. It makes you feel good, right? It makes you feel good. And why do you like that feeling so much? Like, is there anything else that recreates that experience for you in your life that isn't food for one? Because sometimes the food is just, it's just the medium. You can replace it with anything in life. But what is it, what is that giving you, okay? It's making you feel good, but what is it filling for you? What is it nurturing for you? A lot of times we're not nurturing ourselves. We're not being transparent, open and honest with ourselves. So don't fret, enjoy your holiday. If there's food pushers, let them be there. Look at them as like little cartoon characters that are like, I don't know, in your world, just kind of like placed there. It's okay. Don't live so much in here, anticipating things that haven't happened yet. Anyway, if you like this video, let me know. Leave some comments below. Um, if you experience this or have trouble around the holidays, uh, leave some comments. Let me know what you think or ways that you can cope yourself or things that you have tried. I'd be curious to hear. Um, other than that, I put out new videos every single week, so hit that subscribe button, notification bell, so you get notified when a new video goes up, and I will see you on the next video. Peace out.